Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Coliseum. In the last episode, we took down Dakim at Mount Battle, clearing the area of Cypher, and I failed to snag the Entei because Camerupt is an idiot. And in this episode, we are going to be... What the heck was that guy doing? We are going to be checking out stuff that we were told to check out, even though I don't want to check it out. Basically, we need to go down to the Relic Forest and just see what's up down here. This guy will explain the time flute to us a bit more. I think this is actually the guy that you need to talk to. Um, he tells you you can only call Celebi once, just like we knew. I don't want to use the time flute yet. I just think that the game looks for you to come in here, so... I don't know, there's always just one area that no matter how many times I play it, I always, like, don't remember where to go. I think that, like, everyone has that in each longer game they play. There's always one part where they can just never remember exactly what they're supposed to do with that part. Um, like in Earthbound, for me, it's when you first get to Foresight. I never quite remember exactly what you're supposed to do there. It's just that Foresight's so big that it just overwhelms me, like, even to this day. Like, when I go there for the first time, I'm just so impressed by everything, and there's, like, so many things that I want to go check out and do right away that... I just never quite remember exactly what to do right off the bat, so, I don't know. That's just me. So, yeah, this is kind of like my first getting to Foreside when you, uh, come back to Agit Village. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Be useful if one gets summoned Celebi or, or desired. Luckily, it's inscribed on a tablet. Okay, let's see. So we got nothing there. But, um, the game doesn't really seem to be overly clear with what we're supposed to do right now, so when all else fails, go out to the map and see what's going on. And check it out! We have a new area on the map, the Mystery Lab. So we heard about a lab from Dakim, a sinister and menacing laboratory that was built in the desert without notice. So how do we know about it exactly? No one's told us about it, and it was built without notice, so I don't get it. All right, let's check it out. Oh, we got mail! Ah, my controller's going nuts. Okay, let's see. Let's go to our email. We have Mir, B Mir P on nabbed, not Mir B P on, okay. Wes, this is Dookie. We just nabbed a pair of goons that think they, that we think took orders from me or B. They may be worth squeezing some for some intelligence. The police have them in jail, so come to Pyrite in a hurry. Oh, okay. Before we go, there's something that I want to do. Now, be very careful. Walk as close to the electric fence as you can in this part, because you can actually walk behind here. If walk too far, you exit to the map. You want to come back here, and you want to collect this. It's a re three revives. Getting those for free, yeah, I would highly recommend picking those up before you go so that you can get some nice free items. I don't think there's anything else along the edges of this thing, so yeah, we're just going to take off for the time being because we can't really do anything here. I like how vast this desert looks. I mean, granted, I know that's not exactly, you know, graphically impressive to make a vast desert that stretches off into the horizon, but I don't know. I just, I like the Ori region a lot. Like, it's just, I kind of grew up in like a more deserty place, and it's kind of funny though because... I grew up in Arizona, and that's actually exactly what Ore is. It's based on Arizona, as funny as that sounds. Uh, it was based on an American region before uh, Pokemon Black and White came out. A lot of people say that Unova is the first American-based region. No, it's not. Listen, listen. Chief Charles and I, we caught two more suspects. They claim to be... They claim, they came back to that cranky old... To that creaky old building. We nabbed them on the spot. <laughs> what do you got? Huh, you went and checked out the lab? Hey, <laughs> what could it be? I don't have any clue about what's going on at that lab. Right here we have a shiny, we have a jail key, so we can now open up the cells. And Okay, wait, hold on. Did you see that pop-in right there? Uh, so nothing on the bed, nothing on the bed, nothing on the bed. Oh my god! Okay. Yeah, I don't get it either, but for some odd reason, uh, the draw distance there is really bad. So how about we use these jail keys? And we talked to you. Huh? You wouldn't check the... Okay, he's not going to say anything new. Dang it. Okay, so we could do this. So they'd be, they said there will be some prisoners, so they split me and follow you up. But you know, the guys in the next cell, those voices sound familiar. Alright, so let's see. Let's uh, head in there and let's try to question them. I know, opening the doors to these jail cells really safe when you have freaking Johnson on the patrol. Or, not freaking Johnson on duty. And oh my god, your feet are huge! Firma. We were, at, we were collared when we tried to sneak back down to the under. It's just another thing that goes with this, that, and everything else you caught. It's all your fault. So if you recall, we fought her when we were uh, at the top of Mir B's hideout when we were about to go into the cave. Wreath. An elevator going down. There's a key of some sort in her belt. Will you take it? Um, reaching onto a girl's pants while she's asleep. Uh, okay. I guess that sounds like a good idea. All right, so we get an elevator key. 
So with that, they have told us something that's... They've told us there's something in that building that Mirror B was using as a hideout. And at the same time, there's something about an elevator going down. Hmm. What do you say we go and check that out? What do you say we see what that is exactly about? What do you say we do something else that has the word out at the end of it? Let's go and get some gout. Okay, no, let's not do that. That'd be pretty bad. So, in this building, you could go over there with that elevator key... And you could, you know, fight her, you could go down that elevator and see what's down there that is so important to Cypher. Or, or, you can go over this way, and you'll notice that this roller boy will actually rematch you. And actually, in this battle, Espeon learns Psybeam, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Confusion. Confusion only has 50 power, compared to Psybeam having 65 and having the possibility to confuse just like, uh... Fusion does, so that's kind of nice. We're not losing an effect, and we're also gaining more power. So, very welcome to that, because, man, we've been stuck with Confusion for much too long. So when you go over here to try to heal, you see that this Roller Boy rematches you. So you go upstairs, and you get another rematch, and another, and another, and another, and, uh, oh, I faked you out, didn't I? Well, Corona is evolving! What will it become? Everyone knows, but I'll be quiet. I love that evolution animation. Alright, we now have Typhlosion! So, out of all the Pokemon we have, that is the only one that evolves. Evolutions almost never happen in Coliseum. In fact, I was originally planning on not even using a Johto starter, just because I didn't think any of them fit into my team all that well. And then I was kind of like, well, it'd be kind of lame if I never got to show an evolution, so I decided to. And... Very strangely, um, I had a lot of people actually kind of disappointed that I didn't go for Bayleaf, despite my reasoning, because I've used a Grass, a Water, and a Fire in my previous Let's Play, and people were simply hoping that I'd go for Grass to make it go full circle again. But I ended up not doing that just because of the shared weakness at the beginning of the game. I didn't want my whole team to be weak to Bug-type, just because I'd be kind of glaring. But that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, really quick, while we're in Mir B's hideout cave right here, I want to head up here because I never did this on my first run. There's an item box near that I never picked up. It is two Hyper Potions, so pretty decent. It'll actually be pretty helpful to you even this late in the game. Uh, just letting you know, also in this cave, these trainers that have the Shadow Pokemon will rematch you. So should you want another chance at getting Swablu and Metatite, you do get another chance right here. Camera up, you're an idiot. All right, so after all those rematches, I bet you're wondering, what's going to happen if we go into Mirror B's room? Well, all those trainers will rematch you, and then... Check it out. I'm Miracle B! I'm Mirror B's rival success is gonna get me an afro! Yeah. Seriously. They did this. This is an optional boss. You do not need to fight this guy. He has no shadow Pokemon whatsoever. He will only appear here after you have defeated Dakiem at Mount Battle. And it's very, very out of the way. Also, if you finish the main story, this guy is no longer here. So it's only within a very specific window of time that you can find him. And it's only if you were curious enough to see what would happen if you went all the way to Mirror B's room with all those trainers rematching you on the way. So, yeah. Anyway. He started off with Sand Slash, level 38, you know, 39 ground type with the moves Protect, Flail, Slash, and Aerial Ace, as well as Linoon, level 39 normal type with Headbutt, Roar, Protect, and Flail. I'm not really sure why, but he's most of his team knows Flail. I'm not really sure what it is. I don't know. Maybe he's thinking if he just flails around enough, it'll count as dancing. I don't know. That's really the best thing I can think of. Uh, in fact, I think actually his only one Pokemon in his whole team doesn't know Flail. But yeah, this guy is a Cypher Peon recolored to have a gold suit like Mirror B and then have half his head be white and the other half be red. So it's like he's starting to grow an afro, but it hasn't come together into a ball like Mirror B's has yet. I don't know, I just, this is so random. It's so weird. It just, a lot of people I don't think even know this exists. It's so random. I actually found this as a kid too, so yeah, anyway. Um, Electro, level 39 electric type, with the moves ele uh, Explosion, Spark, Light Screen, and Protect. I think his whole team also knows Protect as well. Actually, uh, no, uh, no, no, actually they all do. So, that's kind of interesting. Electrode's quite fast, so you might struggle a little bit with it. I'm finding it really awkward to commentate this, actually, because 
it's very strange. I mean, just listen to the music. It's hilarious. But, like, it's hilarious in a weird way. So, like, I don't really know what to make of this. Um, surprisingly, I didn't have that many people in the comments telling me to fight Miracle B. Um, so I'm guessing it's not that well known. Heck, I think I was even talking with people before this Let's Play about wanting to show this, and they even told me that they didn't know this existed, and for good reason, too. It's really odd. <laughs> this music! I want, like, an extended version of this. Then again, someone's probably gonna upload one now that I said that. Uh, the, oh, come on. It's always... I swear to God, it is not 30% of the time does it actually paralyze you when you attack something like that. It's 100% of the time. It always is. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh... Flame wheel on line in. Okay, there we go. Alright, what are you doing, Electrode? You're... Damn, Corona's really getting picked on here. Yeah, headbutts, it's going for Corona. Dang it, I was so hoping that we'd get Miss Drevis here. Plus, that Electrode knows Explosion. I was kind of hoping that it would that it would do Explosion and uh, it would not affect Miss Drevis, but unfortunately we're not getting that. Okay, and Electrode's fainting animation is hilarious. Just his eyes. <laughs> Alright, so we take him out. Get our experience, and what's sending it out now? He's sending out Seeking! Level 39, Water Type, with the moves Waterfall, Horn Attack, Flail, and Protect. So... Interesting, to say the least. Uh, we'll use Shadow Ball, and I guess I'll keep Corona out there, because Corona's kind of not all that useful to me, and if I healed its paralysis, I think Seeking would just take it out all the same, so I might as well just have Corona there to take another turn of hits, so that Miss Drevis can get in some free damage, and so that I can send out something for free next turn. I know it's a sacrificial play, and it's not very nice, but hey, I don't really have much else I can do, so Waterfall, like I knew it would, and of course it's Corona. Corona goes down, and who should we? We'll do Quagsire, okay. Oddly, out of the Pokemon that I'm actually using, speaking of that, people seem to keep not knowing that I am not using my Umbreon. I know, it's really weird though, but a lot of people seem to just continue being like, you know, you really need to use your Umbreon more because it's falling behind in the levels. No, I'm not using my Umbreon. It's just kind of there because it was a starter Pokemon. I don't intend on using it through the end of the adventure. I just kind of have it there with me because I might need a Dark type to take a Psychic hit every once in a while, and people were telling me not to get rid of it for you know, immediately, like I was thinking of doing. And Horn Attack, it doesn't hit Mr. Eva's course. So, okay, let me get this straight. Miracle B, right here. He's following in Mirror B's footsteps. He's yet to use an attack that doesn't affect Mr. Eva's, whereas Mirror B did that three different times in my fight with him. So, you're meaning to tell me that Miracle B is smarter than Mirror B? And that he could do two attacks that unfect Miss Drevis and still be technically smarter than Mirror B. Really? I don't know, I'm just I'm finding this so odd that Miracle B is putting up more of a fight. Take him out, and now out comes his last Pokemon, which is Sudowoodo! Level 39, rock type, sturdy for the ability with the most flail, mimic, self-destruct, and protect. Now, this does not have uh, uh this is not a shadow Pokemon like Mirror B's was. So, you will not be able to snag this. This is actually not where you're getting a second chance to snag that. So, just keep that in mind when doing this. Can you surf right here? And. Of course, when I want to take Mr. Eve. But, of course, when I want to take Sudo Widow out in one hit, it doesn't work. So we get a headbutt, and of course, it's not attacking Mr. Evis. I'm to the point where I'm just expecting the AI to attack Mr. Evis as something that does zero damage, yet it just isn't happening anymore. So, we use Psybeam, and okay, what are you doing? Could you use self destruct, please? Ah, dang it. He's gonna make it. Alright, what are you stealing? Using Surf, okay. Alright, hopefully he won't get a chance to use that, because I could kind of... Actually, no, that'd be great. It would heal Quagsire, and Mistrevis could probably live through it as well, but it's probably not gonna happen. So, of course, Quagsire's Quick Clock keeps activating. I've been having really good luck with that, actually. A lot better luck than I was expecting to. I was thinking of getting rid of the Quick Claw and swapping it out for something different that isn't luck-based, but... I don't know, I'm having pretty good luck with it. So, take out Lainoon. Get our experience, or not Lainu, we take out Sudowoodo. And he has gone the whole battle without doing an attack that didn't affect Mr. That means that he is three times as smart as Mirror. Well, technically four times, because you gotta count zero, so. Too bad it wasn't the other way around, or else you could say he's infinity times smarter, but hey, we didn't fight Miracle B first, so it doesn't work like that. And. Oh! Okay. So, Quagsire, poor thing. It goes down. Uh, 
You know what? Just because I brought it up earlier in this fight, let's bring out Umbreon. Let's go for it. We're gonna take out Umbreon. We're gonna get Umbreon some experience for the first time since freaking Fenac City. Go, Mr. Evis! Psybeam! Gain some experience for your brethren! Actually, that might level it up, though, because Lineu's 11 levels higher. Let's see. Give Mr. Evis credit, let's see. Wow, that didn't gain nearly as much as I thought it would. I defeated Miracle B. My dreams! You ruined my dreams of getting an afro! Yeah, it is the law. Because my animals beat up your animals, you have to shave your head. I'm sorry, but that's the law of the land in the world of Pokemon. Don! I don't care if no one agrees, I'm still the rightful heir and me a bee! Even though my hands are grown into a full afro do! So unfortunately, after that, we have no way of getting out of here right away. We want to leave. We gotta walk it. So... Yeah, I'll see you guys in just a moment. So now that we have shown that very strange and unique fight with Miracle B, how about next time at Pokemon Coliseum, we head down that elevator and take out the girl that's guarding it. See you guys then.